Hi, I'm Sana, and behind me is a giant pile of Dutch book recommendations. As a lot of you might already know, I am originally from the Netherlands. I lived there until I was 23, but I studied English literature and I moved to London in my 20s to find a job in publishing. I've gotten a lot of questions over the years from people who are curious about Dutch literature and they were wondering if I could recommend some. So that is what you're getting today. Books originally written in Dutch by Dutch authors that have now been translated into English so you are able to read them as well. So this is gonna be a kind of a Dutch literature 101 video. And of course, I know there's gonna be some Dutch watchers as well who might not have read that much Dutch literature and are interested in getting into it. I've always been a big reader, but from the time when I was about a teenager, I mostly moved to reading books in English, very often by British or American authors. And then I went to study English as a second language and English literature at university. So you can imagine my Dutch literature knowledge was a bit lacking. This summer I went on a bit of a reading journey. I was working with the Dutch Foundation for Literature or Het Letterenfonds on their campaign New Dutch Writing as they were promoting Dutch books in translation in the UK. And they're also working on this video with me, which is obviously a dream come true. And it also meant that I could carve out a lot of extra time to read these books and to be able to recommend them to you. So I spent the last few months digging through all the Dutch books that are available in translation and reading them and picking my favorites and seeing which ones I would like to recommend. My personal reading style, as you might already know, is that I like classics, I like sad stories, I like genre fiction a lot as well, so historical sci-fi fantasy. I feel like there are quite a lot of historical books in Dutch, but there's not a lot of Dutch fantasy and sci-fi, interestingly. Researching more into like why certain genres aren't as popular in certain countries and things like that is a topic that I'm really interested in. And I also am going to make a whole video about Dutch reading culture early next year. So if there's any questions about that or topics you'd like to hear me talk about, let me know in a comment down below. Also, just out of curiosity, if you read in multiple languages yourself, maybe you could leave some flag emojis in a comment to let me know which languages you read in. All right, we're gonna go into the books now. I'm gonna do this in sections. So below you'll be able to see all the different categories we're going to talk about. And in the description I will also put all the titles, all the author names, and all the translators names. We're going to start with some short stories which actually in the past I've not read that much of but I'm slowly getting more and more interested. I mean this is a no-brainer to start with. It is the Penguin Book of Dutch Short Stories edited by Joost Zwagerman. This was only published a few years ago and I think I picked up a copy from the office when I was working at Penguin and I saw it lying around. Even though it might not look like it, it is over 500 pages and it is a huge selection of translated short stories by Dutch authors. It has a really great introduction, which I underlined lots of. It has lots of information about the different authors. There is also a Dutch timeline if you need to brush up on some Dutch history. I used to be the kind of person who would skip the introductions for books, which sometimes is a good idea because they're filled with spoilers, but for a collection like this, this was the perfect primer. I had never read that much about short stories. Really interesting talking about the different types of short stories and the context of Dutch authors compared to authors in other countries at the time. He also paired up some Dutch authors with like famous English counterparts. So far I've read three or four short stories from this. I like that it kind of goes, you know, everywhere with tone from serious to funny 
there's really really short stories and there's one that are more like novellas there were lots of familiar names in here for me as well and then lots that I had never heard of before but that judging from the introduction are absolute classics really interesting if you are thinking of just like starting out and wanting to kind of read across the scope of what is available then this is quite interesting I think the cover is a little bit misleading because it makes it look like they're all really really old stories but it's actually from 1915 until modern day but if you want to go even more modern and like want to know what like the next big thing in the Netherlands might be then this is a really really cool set it is called the Verzet collection which means resistance but these are called chap books and they are published by strangers press and so each of the chap books has a collection of short stories by a different author who worked with a different translator so i've read a few of these i read reconstruction and i'm pretty sure all of these authors are being translated into english for the first time and this dealt with the themes of like cities and home and identity. This cover is incredible. It is The Dandy, which kind of dealt with modern feminism and relationships. There was one about like a fictional women's magazine, which I really enjoyed. And this morning I read Something Has to Happen, which I know Lena got as well. And she was saying she really enjoyed this one. So I uh, read it immediately as well, which is a lot about grief and family and emotions. Now we're gonna go slightly back into history and go to some classics, but we're not actually going that far back so we're going to about the second world war and with the netherlands being invaded during the second world war obviously this plays like a huge cultural role in a lot of books and films and there was a note in the penguin book of dutch short stories as well about how the language like dutch changed a lot historically so actually when you're reading older dutch classics it's a lot harder to read compared to an English person reading an older English classic. Interestingly, I hadn't really thought about that because I did not read those like really, really old classics when we were assigned them in high school. Maybe because of that reason. So we're gonna start with The Evenings by Gerard Reve. It's really hard to pronounce Dutch names like next to English sentences. Translated by Sam Garrett. And this is kind of, and I don't want to compare every Dutch book to an English counterpart, but sometimes there are some helpful comparisons. This is kind of the Netherlands' Catcher in the Rye. It is really accessible, really easy to read, and it follows a 23-year-old young man called Fritz in the 10 days leading up to New Year's Eve. It is set, I think about two years, after the second world war but it's just about like all the little details of what he does on the day and the things that he worries about and he's quite lonely and this book like really really connected to a lot of young people when it came out i was mostly just surprised by how incredibly readable this is it's a little dark it's a little funny and it's also quite interesting that the author uh who wrote this when he was about the same age as the main character was one of the first openly gay authors in the Netherlands. I think that was like a theme he came back to more in some of his later books, but that's some part of the context as well. Then there is The Assault by Harry Mulisch. I have both the Dutch and the English version. Actually, for this video, I read some of the books in Dutch, some of them in English, depending on what edition I had at home. And the English version was translated by Claire Nicholas White. I think this is an American edition. So The Assault came out in 1982. And again, upon reading this, I was really, really surprised by how accessible it was. But it starts off being set during the Second World War. A Nazi collaborator gets shot in front of the house of uh, our main character, who is a young boy at the time, then because of that, his whole family is ripped apart. And then after that, you kind of follow his life in different stages. And of course, it is still this like huge thing that happened in his life. I actually have one more like Second World War themed book that is very similar to this, but that will be in the children's YA section. It's time for the big one. The Discovery of Heaven or The Undecking von der Hemel by also Hardy Mullish, same author. He's actually on the back here. And it's been translated by Paul Vincent. So this was first published in 1992. So again, like a modern classic. And it's massive. It's almost a thousand pages. This is also a book that was chosen by the Dutch people. There was some sort of vote as like the best Dutch book ever. It is definitely a challenge, but I can see why it was chosen. I have not finished this yet. I did actually see the English language film adaptation, which features Stephen Fry. And this book has intrigued me for a really long time because in a way it seems like a little bit removed from what I would expect from Dutch literature. And I've been recommending it as the secret history meets the Da Vinci Code, like thematically. It is about two angels that are watching down 
on earth and are trying to make certain events happen and they're doing this by making sure that certain people meet and have a child. It starts off during the Second World War and moves to modern day and they're kind of following all these generations that's like very quickly in the first few chapters and then you get to the main characters who are sort of destined to play out this part. It's about religion and science and humanity. The main characters and some of the topics are quite academic, which is kind of why I compared it to The Secret History. Also a little bit unlikable. Really, really interesting. I'm gonna be reading it over the next few months. If there's any Dutch people out there or people who've read it in translation, let me know what your experience was like. Then we're going from the biggest book to the tiniest novella, which is Het Gouden Ei by Tim Krabbe. Translated it would be The Golden Egg but it was actually translated as The Vanishing. Also by Sam Garrett and this is one of those books that I never picked up because I feel like my literature class in high school ruined it for me. Teachers were always talking about it and analyzing it and turns out it's almost like a bit of a true crime thriller that is really short so interesting so when I finally picked it up a few years back I was like what I missed out on this and I would have absolutely loved that so it's about a couple who are on a road trip and they take a break at a gas station and then the woman disappears there are more twists and turns that I won't get to but you can probably read this in one sitting so glad I read that this is a book that I did read for an assignment in high school in Dutch and I did not like it at the time. I think I was like not in the right mindset or way too young to read it but now having read the summary again I decided to pick it up again and it is by Willem Friedrich Hermans who is another really famous Dutch author translated by Ina Rilke. A young geologist hungry for fame journeys to the mountains of Norway's Arctic North on a research expedition but soon realizes he's more likely to be eaten alive by mosquitoes than win glory. Freezing wet and plagued by insomnia Alfred becomes increasingly desperate and paranoid under the midnight sun until he takes a catastrophic decision. We'll see how I find it a second time. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, we're gonna move from the classics to the contemporary. We're gonna start with a biggie and a famous one because it won the International Man Booker Prize of 2020. And it is The Discomfort of Evening by Marika Lukas Reineveld and translated by Michelle Hutchison. You, I'm guessing, have probably seen this around at some point. This is gorgeously written. It is super dark. You need to check out some trigger warnings for this. It's about a young girl living in a rural village in the Netherlands and her brother falls through the ice while ice skating and dies and the whole family just kind of, I mean, it never seemed like a super healthy family dynamic, but it kind of just like starts falling apart and going in on itself. There's a lot of themes of religion and guilt and it is incredibly intense. I wonder if one day I will actually reread it in Dutch, but I am 100% gonna read more from this author. I listened to the audiobook for this for a part of it and I thought the, the narrator was excellent. I'll do the other farm book as well in connection. So this is Shocked Earth by Saskia Goldschmidt, translated by Antoinette Fawcett. This is actually a super, super recent release. The Dutch one is quite recent and then the English translation is from this year. This is also about a farming family. They live in the north of the Netherlands where there has been uh, like mining for gas and because of that there have been earthquakes. This is a family story of trying to figure out how to modernize. I guess it's like a climate fiction book as well. It's about leaving and coming back and family. It also features a lesbian relationship between two farmers. When I heard the pitch for this, I was just sold immediately. So I'm hoping some of you will be too. I'm reading so much climate themed fiction, so there will be a video at some point. Then something quite different. It is Two Blankets, Three Sheets by Rodan Al Galidi, translated by Jonathan Reader. This feels like a memoir, but uh, in the introduction, the author says, you know, it's not really a memoir. It's obviously kind of based on my life, but it's not really a memoir. Uh, so technically this is a fiction book. And it's about a man from Iraq who in the first chapter arrives at the airport in the Netherlands, rips up his fake passport and basically goes into the journey that asylum seekers go into when they arrive in the Netherlands. It's about him being in that system, trying to navigate it, getting his first impressions of the Netherlands, but also obviously living together with other asylum seekers. It's really revealing. It's a story I haven't heard about much. It doesn't shy away from 
portraying lots of Dutch people in a very negative light with like how they respond to asylum seekers. There's a lot of humor in it as well. I actually went on a press trip with the foundation a few years ago and we saw the author speak and as soon as I saw him speak I thought I have to pick this up. And then finally in the modern section we have a bit of poetry as well. This is how the first sparks became visible by Simona Atanga Bocono and it's translated by David Homer. Now, I don't think this is the very first Dutch poetry I've ever read, but I haven't read a lot of it. I actually translated a few Dutch poems and English poems when I studied translation for my master's. And the art of translating poetry is so, so interesting because there are so many different choices you need to make. I think my favourite poem from this collection was actually the, the titular one. There are a lot of different themes in this. Nature, identity, race. And I think with most poetry, I kind of want to read it once and then come back to it and read it again. I actually read this out loud as well, which I, I find very helpful. Okay, for the final section, we were talking about some children's books, some YA books. Uh, I've got three for you. First, there is one that I read when I was a child and it is Winter in Wartime. I included this in a reel and I got lots of comments from Dutch people saying like, oh my God, Winter in Wartime by Jan Terlau and translated by Laura Watkinson. This is basically a children's classic about a young boy who joins the resistance during the Second World War because he finds a British pilot who crashed in a nearby forest and he tries to hide him. There is also his uncle who was involved in things. This was like, one of my first experiences of reading something about the the second world war and it left a huge impression there was also a film adaptation which actually has um jamie campbell bauer in it playing the british pilot and another dutch children's classic that's been adapted for netflix is the letter for the king i haven't actually watched the series yet on netflix but i, I will do so soon this is by donke dracht also translated by laura watkinson i actually have an interview with laura up on my channel that i did quite a few years ago about her journey into becoming a translator and this is about a young boy who wants to become a knight and has to make a life-changing decision and then finally we've got Lampy, Lumpy in Dutch, uh, by Annette Schaap, translated by also Laura Watkinson. This is middle grade, this is a story of a young girl who has to light the lighthouse every day for her dad and one day she forgets and she gets taken away from her home. It is sweet, it is sad, it is magical. It has some lovely illustrations as well. So beautifully written and I raced through this and absolutely loved it. And actually I am pretty sure we met the author of this as well when I went on that press trip. That was a lot of books and I hope they gave you a bit of an overview of what is available in translation. If you've read any of these already please do let me know in a comment and if you're looking for more there is also the new Dutch writing Instagram which I set up for the foundation so you can find some more recommendations there as well. Happy reading! I am going to continue to read this beast over the Christmas break and thanks again to the Dutch Foundation for Literature for working on this video with me. It's been such a dream to be able to collaborate with them and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei!